everybody, welcome back to Bish's RV. Josh the RV Nerd here, still out in Kalispell, Montana. Although, you know I say that, I don't know what order these videos are necessarily coming out in, so it might look like I'm jumping all around the country. Whatever the case, behind us is the 1800 rear bath bullet. This is uh, going to be a solid either single or couples camper. It has some really good features, but there is aspects where its best qualities are also its worst enemies. So getting inside the layout, it's a simple, easy, carpetless, no slide, pet friendly kind of layout. And it's a little bit bigger inside because it's eight foot wide. It still has a normal six and a half foot ceiling. They don't go super short or anything. They just go a little bit wider. So there's more room to walk around that front sofa convertible Murphy bed thing. And we've got campsite viewing window and dining, which is really handy. And for a small camper, they did what they could with the kitchen. I respect it. Pretty decent bathroom considering the overall size of the camper back there. It also has four corner stabilizer jacks and power tongue jack, which a lot of single axle campers don't have. They put a lot of their bigger bullet features here down in the little, I call them BBs, the crossfires. This is the littlest member of the bullet family. Still has 200 watts of factory solar on the roof and who knows how long they're gonna keep doing this, but for now they're still coming with 200 amp hours of lithium batteries right from the factory and it is still prepped for a um like a portable solar panel if you want to daisy chain that all together the belly's even enclosed which is a rare find but all of the extra space and the nice things they're doing that all adds up into extra weight and as a result that means this rv has a I'll say concerningly low cargo carrying capacity. If you're a person who wants to tow with like full uh, water in the tanks and stuff, that might mean this isn't the right RV for you. And it's it's a bummer sharing deal breaker factors like that, but if I was gonna spend my lots of money, uh, I would want to know if it's the right camper for me. And that's my goal with these videos. And if you appreciate how we're gonna share the good with the bad, hit that subscribe button, like our video. Let's hop inside there. Now, right away when you step inside, I get a little bit different feel and vibe from this because it seems like manufacturers are either in their farmhouse phase or they're all HOA approved brown. And Bullet said, we're gray, baby. We're gray. And it's still neutral. It's just a different side of neutral. Now, it's interesting because with all the, the light coming in from that beautiful Montana blue sky right now, it makes those kitchen cabinets almost look blue, but it's not. It's, this is a decor that depending on how much light is or is not in an area, it will look like it changes colors like crazy, but it is all one color. That's what's really kind of wild about it. Now, I will tell you, when it comes to really fine color details, uh, the camera that I'm using is not excellent in that regard. So if you're not sure about the color of something, uh, I, des I definitely recommend still seeing it in person because it will uh, very much... It look, it'll look different. Like, it'll just hit the naked human eye a little bit differently. Now, campsite window coverage in small campers is sometimes hard to find. Beautiful look out there. And I'm sure Winnebago appreciates the uh, the free product placement that we gave him on that Hike 100 series over there. <laughs> now, uh, up top, you see that little white plug with the blue strip up there. That is telling us that's where it's kind of got a little prep point for like a little Wi-Fi hotspot kind of job. And up here, um, campers like this have existed for a long, long time, but the whole Murphy bed concept in these little campers has kind of caught on recently. The thing is with this camper, it doesn't have to be a Murphy bed if you don't want it to be. Uh, and what's funny is that's not actually a, what I call bendy bed, even though you literally have to bend the bed to get it to do whatever you want it to do. That is just a 60 by 74 short queen mattress. They, they didn't do anything else with it. You notice how the sofa still has armrests too. A lot of Murphy sofas do not. Now, if you uh, lift that up, you see you still got a little bit of footlocker storage under there and dual hanging wardrobe towers. Uh, and that Murphy bed, it's just the, the platform's gravity fed. It's just lift up, lift down, there you go. Lift down, you know what I mean. Flip up, flip down, there you go. And, and that's all there really is to it. It's very simple and easy. Now, while you're checking out all the pocket screwed cabinetry here, I do want to mention uh, that this does have uh, two refrigerator options. You can get the gas electric eight cubic fridge that we're looking at today, or you can get it with a 12 volt compressor fridge. So, you, uh, you know, depending on what area of the country or what style of camping you're doing is probably the more appropriate way to say it. You can get something a little more custom tailored to you. Now that dinette goes right above one of the wheel wells. That's what that little carpeted box under the dining table is. If you happen to notice that, um, as a result, they didn't really have room for a dual pedestal table, and I'm really glad they didn't because there'd be no leg room under that thing had they done it. Instead, what they have is it actually brackets against the wall, then just has a single stability leg. 
And even though that's not flashy and fancy, that is really sturdy and stable when you actually do get to your campsite. That kind of setup doesn't get a lot of love, but frankly, it is pretty effective. Uh, and other than the, um, <laughs> the little bit of carpet on the wheel well down there, your general walkable space in this is carpetless and ventless, uh, which does lend itself to some uh, you know decent kind of pet friendliness. Now, um, throughout the RV, uh, like in that upper overhead cabinet next to the TV hookups, you'll see another one of these outlets that has that yellow sticker on it. That's telling you it's prepped to the inverter loop on this RV. So if you choose to add an inverter or have us do it for you, um, those outlets could be live purely off battery power. But understand as you do that, you do tax the batteries a little harder. Good space around that toilet. By going with uh, a shower curtain next to the, the toilet, they really left plenty of room. And really, whether you're a righty or a lefty, I think that's going to work pretty well. Um, the curtain, though, it does kind of mean you pretty much need a tub so the curtain doesn't dribble out onto the, uh, you know, the, the floor of the RV. And these don't have like a shower, miser, water, save, or anything. And they do a one-two wombo combo with the power vent fan up as the skylight in the shower. And I'm glad it's there. Like... I'm kind of giving you the facial expression of like the bathroom uh, headroom is questionable, but the fact is there's a lot of single axle little campers that don't have any kind of skylight and they're a buck cheaper or whatever. But the problem with those is that somebody like me, who's like six foot or more, you literally can't stand in the shower of those at all. In this one, you can. Now, you see how you get that big uh, pocket down there. It actually goes around the corner, which is kind of uh, interesting. Hopefully you don't have, I don't know, a lot of cargo shift down there. That might be a good spot maybe for a couple small totes that you can slide back and forth. That may work or like a basket or something. But you notice above that, you've just got just huge extra hanging storage. That's actually one of the funniest things I think about this RV. I feel like it actually has a little bit better hanging storage in it even as compared to some of the fifth wheels that I've seen. But not everybody cares about hanging storage. You could always throw some kind of like drawer shelf organizer in that cabinet. What would you do with it actually? Now the small size and the, the lighter overall weight of this camper makes it a, a great fit if you've got like a, a smaller limited capacity tow vehicle. But at the same time, it does have that potentially very limiting cargo capacity that might be a problem for you you know that's 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 just one of those things that you really want to consider um and i hope you appreciate again how we go out of our way to kind of point stuff like that out power tongue jack on the front double propane tanks you don't see that as often on single axle campers that's kind of a rare find right there it also has an auto changeover regulator so like if you're using the left tank and it drains, it'll just start pulling from the right tank automatically, and then you can swap out the left one as needed so you don't have a break in service. And you can see how they have that nice metallic strap, which uh, actually you can also lock that down for security's sake uh, with those uh, dual lithium batteries up front, each 100 amp hours. Um, they also have heating elements in them. So um, lithium batteries don't really like to accept charge when they're cold. So if it's like, you know, less than 40 degrees, you can turn on the heater, warm up the batteries, and then they can start accepting charge without being damaged. Um, the walls and floor of this are all uh, laminated, aluminum framed. If I'm not mistaken, they're doing what they call their hyperdeck flooring system in here, which uh, is an all-composite uh, wood-free floor construction, actually. Uh, that's something that they've been doing for a number of years now, and I've been asking the question, and I haven't had anybody take me up on this yet, are there bullet owners out there in the last couple of years that have been suffering soft floors with that composite flooring, and I haven't heard people saying yes. I'm going to knock them for this, though. That awning almost feels like why did they even bother <laughs> now it's not a big camper but it does look like they probably could have extended that a foot or two and kind of you know expanded on that just a bit there um windows are all tinted by the way which is nice to help keep the sunshine and the nosy neighbors out of here now jumping to this back corner something that you don't see is a ladder but what you also don't see is that the rear wall is prepped for a ladder. There's a lot of RVs that if they don't have any sort of 
ladder on them or a prep bracket or anything, they're not capable of accepting a ladder. This one can. So if you want us to install a ladder on something like this or if you want to DIY it yourself, it is something uh, we can do. Now, if you have one of these and that was news to you, because I've found a lot of people don't know that, call Keystone with your VIN number and they can get you a rear wall schematic so you know exactly where all that stuff is. Or you can call a service shop like ours and we can do it. The roof is fully walkable, by the way. Now, you see those Bananarama yellow bars down there? Those are the extra stabilizers for the stabilizer, uh, you know, jacks on the corners. Um, it's all four corner power stabilizers, which is kind of interesting. Let me ask you, if this had manual jacks, would that like, are the power jacks, is that a make or break factor for you? Because it feels like some extra cost and extra weight that I really question if it needs to be there myself. But with no bumper, you might wonder where do I put the stinky slinky sewer hose? And thankfully, they thought of that. They have a little sewer hose tube built right into the back of this thing here, conveniently located right next to the sewer hookups themselves. Now, I, I don't know how good of an angle I can get yet on this here while I'm sitting here. The underbelly is enclosed uh, on these, by the way, which is kind of handy. Now, working our way up front a little bit, I do want to point out a couple other details because single axle campers typically don't have uh, an outside shower uh, like this. Now, that is hot and cold, but you see that it's going to utilize one of those little uh, sprayer coily hoses, but wouldn't you know it. The garden hose sprayer head and the coily job itself, both right in here, factory supplied. Now over on the left, you see uh, the big black box with the white sticker says inverter prep. Uh, if you wanna just splice an inverter into the base version of this, that's where it'd go. Uh, and uh, the blue thing to the left of that is the solar charge controller. Even here at their absolute base minimum factory standard, Keystone is outfitting these with 200 watts of factory roof solar and a 15 amp MPPT charge controller by Victron. Well, none of that is super high voltage kind of stuff. Like you're not running the air conditioners and stuff like that, certainly. But my point is their minimum package, they're still using like good, respectable hardware. They didn't cheap out on it. So this floor plan is certainly not unique exclusively to Bullet uh, in the RV industry. So I'm gonna leave you some links in the description where you can see where I've done some other videos on other RVs with similar floor plans. And if you're curious, you can check out uh, pricing on these. Well, actually, whether you're curious or whether you're serious, pricing on anything that we have in stock is just a click away. You don't need to give us your grandmother's social security number or any of that nonsense. So when you're ready, we're ready. And until then, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. So just random things that I don't usually encounter over in my cornfield, Michigan kind of area. Yesterday, a bunch of cattle got loose and were trouncing through here. We literally had cattle walking through our lot, which was an interesting experience. It's not impossible to have happen back home. And remember, your chances of being killed by a cow are low, but never zero. Actually, you're more likely to get killed by a cow than a shark, so do the math on that. Uh, and then yesterday, there was a ground spout. Just a big old gush of water came out of the ground. And then today around the office, I heard back here by the grass, we had a rattlesnake. And I'm like, there's no rattles.